Malcolm No friends. I mean, <laughs> he's, if he's hanging around with those people, uh, you know, and it is it's sad really, but I don't think he has too many friends left in the Liberal Party. No, moment, no. But, um, maybe, maybe he thinks the question is, will you be my friend? And the answer is yes. But do you, I mean, how sad this is, right? You know, as a former Prime Minister, you should be able to command great authority. If you come out with a pronouncement on some affair of the day, as Tony Abbott often does, you know, you command attention in the newspapers or TV and people listen. This man's just standing there standing on a street corner handing out leaflets to commuters <laughs> at King's Cross. <laughs> if we are to agree that our, that our Aboriginal brothers and sisters are distinct from the rest of us, and I would argue until the cows come home that they're not, but all that aside, if they are different, then why not consult the ones who are successful mm. and tells the, tell the ones who aren't, this is how you do it. And what you're doing by categorising everybody as a victim is is just you're diminishing them as human beings. It's what Jacinta Price says, you know, I don't feel I'm sick of people feeling sorry for me. I'm really disappointed with our most successful um, footy players. I noticed um, Jonathan Thurston, I think it was, mm. uh, absolute legend in rugby league. Eddie Betts in the AFL. All of these really successful and so deeply admired Aboriginal sportsmen have come out in favour of, of the yes case. Well, they didn't need it. What? what? Yeah, yeah. In their, in their defence, I mean, we don't pay them as sort of deep thinkers, do we? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're rather that's... sort of, act, you know, it's like saying I'm rather disappointed with the way Fred Paul plays football. You know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <just> <laughs> well, I'm not a deep thinker either. So anyway, <laughs> but uh, no, you're right. And I think you have uh, you might have touched on uh, one of the one of, one of the uh, shortcomings of Australian culture, I'd have to say, Nick, is that uh, we revere our sports people so highly that uh, we we consult them for, cons- for changes to our constitution. It's a grassroots party. The base is there to energise the party, not the other way around. And, and, oh, that's and a very good point. One of the big problems is that the, the structures of the party means that the base just get don't get listened to and it's, it's, it becomes a sort of factional power game uh, because... You know, you and I know there's a lot of really smart, energetic liberals full of ideas from the, uh, off, you know, including a lot of young people, mm. and I just don't think they're using that resource at all. We can't go back to those times. Well, we can't. I, I'd, I'd argue that a lot of these are, are, are quite fundamental principles. I mean, we believe in liberty. We believe that rights connote duties. Spirit of yep. the Volunteer. This is all John Stuart Mill. We're actually going to mention John Stuart Mill later on, but let me just is make. Is he going this... to be on the show? Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Through the <laughs> wonders of artificial That'd be great. intelligence, this wouldn't it? A, yeah, this yeah. would be the highlight of my interviewing <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> and after, and coming up after the break, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, um, uh, no, but let's just return to we believe in the crown. Now that. Uh, that may not exist now. That may be an impossible uh, objective now. But I would argue that the the um, demise of that sentiment has has given rise to the voice. I mean, the crown represented the the sort of fundamental enlightenment principles that on which the country was faded, uh, oh. uh, founded, and uh, as a result of th- those principles being somewhat diminished in value, we now find ourselves proposing uh, a change to our constitution to divide us by race. Now, the Crown never represented anything like that, did it, Nick? One of the easiest political targets this week was Qantas. This company mm. is completely on the nose. Its planes, never ta- its planes never take off on time if they take off at all. It has the highest rate of complaints from customers in any from any for any co- uh, company in the nation. It has signed up to the government's yes vote, which looks conspicuously conspicuously like a quid pro quo for the government blocking Qatar Airways from increasing its presence in Australia. And now it's been caught selling tickets on flights that were already cancelled, and is sitting on half a billion dollars worth of unused airfares. Un- so, Nick, do you know, <laughs> this is a trick question, Nick, who led the charge against all this corporate incompetence? No, you tell me. It was Labor Senator Tony Sheldon, former leader of the Transport Workers ah, Union. Ah, yes. Now, Nick, 
where were the Liberals? I mean, mm. this is the biggest free kick of the week. Where were they? Indeed, yeah. No, I haven't got an answer to that. I would have thought they should have done it. Alan's detractors know him as a shock jock mm. uh, or someone who is so across detail that he can bamboozle any politician in the country. Mm. But what most people don't know about Alan is that he's, you know, he'd, he'd probably cringe if, I, if he heard me say this, but he's a deep thinker. Like mm. quoting John Stuart Mill, who's who else is quoting John Stuart Mill these days? Mm. Um, at a time when our freedoms are in fact uh, being um, compromised, and you know, and in Alan's inimitable way, he says, "Well, just bug a big brother." Well, they're not they're not teaching that at school, are they? Not, no, well, not most schools. I mean, there are a, a, a precious few schools where they do take uh, Western uh, tradition in. Seriously, they warn that there'd be an increasing number of generator unplanned, un, uh, generator unplanned outage rates. <laughs> a generator unplanned outage rate. That's, that's a blackout to you, Emily. That's a blackout. Um, they, they go. <laughs> As distinct from a generator planned outage, is it? Yeah, they go on to say they talk about a, a rising uh, amount of. Unserved energy or use, <laughs> and that's, that's that's ice cream melting in a freezer. That's unserved energy. <laughs> that's right, or unserved energy. It's like an you know if you go to a restaurant and order your dinner and it doesn't come, that's an unserved <laughs> dinner. <laughs> but unserved energy, and it, it goes on to define it. Unserved energy represents energy that cannot be supplied to consumers <laughs> when demand exceeds supply. <laughs> and use, they call it unserved energy. Use at USE, and it says that. Um, uh, use can lead to involuntary load shedding. <laughs> that's a blackout. <laughs> that's, that's someone standing in the dark flicking a switch on and off and yeah. nothing happening. So use, unserved energy, is when they can't serve you energy. In other words, use is completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> He's Spanish, remember. I mean, they're known for being passionate. You know, this is the country from which the flamenco and, and you know, great, great sort of passionate... Uh, um, art uh, arises. But out of all the things you'd be tempted to do in such circumstances, do you think you'd really want to give a player a tonguey? Well, it wasn't a tonguey, Nick. How would you know? <laughs> well, we don't know where it stopped. Well, let me let me enlighten you with the quote that was attributed to Jennifer Hermoso the following day, right? Quote, It was a totally spontaneous mutual gesture because of the immense joy that winning a World Cup brings. The President and I have a great relationship. His behaviour with all of us has been outstanding and it was a natural gesture of affection and gratitude. End of quote. Now, Sounds that like was... one of those hostage videos to <laughs> me. <laughs> no, the hostage thing comes when the feminists and the media get, ha get hold of her and she changes her mind. That's that's the feminist uh, sort of you know statement. Oh, the sort of the hostage statement, if you ask me. She yeah. changed her mind because it, you know, the, the the powers that be couldn't let this go without turning it into a controversy that bordered on uh, some sort of uh, uh, um, allegation that he was making a. He uh, grabbed her head. Yeah, well, I mean, it's okay, just to grab Spanish, a woman's mate. head.